Patreon's crowdfunding platform is hacked, Experience T-Mobile server is breached, Android Stage Fright 2.0 is a thing, and a Linux denial of service attack. All coming up now on ThreatWire. Hello world, I'm Shannon Morse, and this is ThreatWire for October 2nd, 2015, your summary of the threats to our security, privacy, and internet freedom. Our apologies for not having an episode to you earlier this week. I've got a hold of the reins, so let's go ahead and jump right into the news. First off with Patreon, a crowdfunding platform for artists, podcasters, projects, and more, which by the way, we use for ThreatWire and TechThing. They've just recently posted and emailed an announcement to their contributors and creators on Wednesday saying that the site had been the target of a security breach. Data stolen includes names, email addresses, shipping addresses, some billing addresses, private messages, and history of patronages, which you may have contributed to. Also included was the source code for the site. The CEO of Patreon also commented on the passwords, social security numbers, and tax forms of creators, in which he said they are encrypted with a 2048-bit RSA key, with passwords using the hash scheme called Bcrypt and randomly salted. The breach was discovered on September 28th and, quote, the team is making every effort to prevent something like this from happening in the future. The post also urges users to change their passwords, which I very much agree with. Now, later on, a little bit more information came to light. Patreon had been using a web application tool called, and I'll probably mess up this name, but it's WorkZoog Utility Library to run production servers and this library shouldn't be publicly available because it enables a person to run a remote code execution on the server, which basically means that the server gets owned. The security firm called Detectify announced that they had reported the issue to Patreon on September 23rd, and Patreon didn't actually mitigate the issue until the 28th. As with all breaches of security, especially this one for our own patrons, we advise everyone when signing up for a site to use your best judgment and not put your trust fully in the hands of any company. Any website can be breached, and we need to continue to educate each and every one of ourselves that this can happen to anyone at any time. Moving on to an even worse breach, on Thursday of this week, T-Mobile shared the news that Experian's network had been hacked. You may wonder why T-Mobile would report this. Experian is used by the company to run credit checks on potential customers. To run those checks, T-Mobile had to send incredibly private information over to Experian. The hack included names, addresses, birth dates, encrypted social security numbers and driver's license ID numbers, and passport ID numbers for 15 million potential or current customers that went to T-Mobile and applied for financing anytime during about the past two years. In a post from Experian North America, they said the company took action to secure the server as soon as the breach was discovered. They also advised to never give out any personal information over the phone regarding this hack in the event that in the event that someone may try to social engineer customers. Experian and T-Mobile are offering two years of free credit monitoring due to the hack. And if you thought the stage fright bug was patched, well, there's a new one in town or actually two. The new Stage Fright 2.0 bugs allow the processing of MP3 or MP4 files uh, to be exploited on any device from Android 1.0 all the way up to devices running 5.0. Yeah, they're all vulnerable. So this means that an attacker could send a malicious audio or video file to a target to exploit them, even on updated devices. Google has an update scheduled to release next week and will patch the two vulnerabilities. Lastly for today, Akamai Technologies discovered a network of denial-of-service infected Linux computers called the Zor DDoS botnet, which are flooding sites with 150 gigabits of data per second, in turn making some targets go offline. Targets are mostly found in Asia and include gaming and education sites. Zor DDoS uses weak command shell passwords on Linux computers to gain root access, which then allows an attacker to download and execute a malicious file and gives them control over the compromised device. The full description on how this DDoS works can be found on the stateoftheinternet.com site, as well as how to mitigate the issues on your own Linux machine. 
All right, patreon.com slash threatwire. Yes, that is where you go to support us. And thank you to everyone who continually contributes to the show. We know that you are probably just as concerned about the breach we mentioned earlier as we are. And I want to thank you for coming to us to hear about all the updates on security and privacy. No matter what company that they involve, we will report on it. Again, we are ad free, we are independent, and we really like your pet photos. We're also very close to getting an RSS feed, to sh so share this with all your family and friends, share it around, subscribe, it really does help. We'll continue with our one episode per week rotational format until we reach our very next goal, at which time we'll be able to do two episodes per week with Darren Kitchen, Patrick Norton, and myself. Threatwire.net to find all the shows, and with that, I'm Shannon Morse, and I will see you on the internet. Thank <laughs> you.